yes uh, mohammad afzal we started and we had some technical issues so we have now fixed them and i'm just resuming it Okay, so um, before I start off, let me discuss that what is going to be the agenda for today. I've discussed with you people. Uh, I mean, like what I've done is I've shared with you people the exam questions uh, that I plan to go through today. And uh, what I have actually done uh, with respect to my planning is I've actually, uh, I mean, like my objective of conducting the session of today is that I would be going through multiple exam questions. And before I go through those multiple exam questions, I would actually be, I repeat, if I, when I go through those multiple exam questions, the first thing that I'll be doing is I'll be having a quick recall of the techniques, which I think that I should be recalling. And then I'll start off with those specific questions. So that is what the objective of today's session is going to be. And uh, hopefully, inshallah, we will be uh, um, able to get through multiple things um, uh, through this session of today, inshallah. Now let's see. <sighs> yes, we will read along. Uh, Arun, don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. Um, okay. So let's uh, start uh, discussing about the first question that we have in here. The name of the question is JHK coffee machine. And uh, when I talk about this JHK coffee machine, it says that JHK manufactures coffee makers for use in bars and cafes. It has been successful over a period of over the last five years and has built and maintained a loyal customer base by making a high quality machine backed by a three year warranty. So if I talk about this JHK, what we know is that the company has been in operation for the past five years. And what they have done is they have developed a strong loyal customer base by making a high quality machine backed by a three year warranty. The warranty states that JHK will recover Warranty, what does it state? That the JHK will recover and repair any machine that breaks down in the warranty period at no cost. So what you have done is you have told your customers that in case if there is any breakdown, we are going to repair the machine within, a period, within the warranty period without any cost being charged to your people. Now what next is there? The next situation with respect to this question is it says additionally, JHK always maintains always maintains sufficient spare parts. So what it says is JHK always maintains sufficient spare parts to be able to quote for a repair on any of its machine made within the previous 10 years. So what has happened is that first of all, you are giving a warranty. And then in addition to giving the warranty, you maintain sufficient spare parts to be able to quote for a repair of any of its machine within the next 10 years. Now, I told you people that if you come across such a question, what you should be doing is you should be going through uh, the top paragraph first. And once you have gone through the top paragraph, the next thing that you should be doing is you should be going through the exam question requirement and then you can go about it. So if I talk about the next thing, it says that it says that write a report to the finance director. So what do you need to do? You need to write a report to the finance director. And while writing the report to the finance director, you need to evaluate the divisional performance at GHK and critically discuss the proposed measures of divisional performance measure. Now see, what happens is a very important part is that you need to understand that what exactly is the examiner expecting us to do. So I repeat a very important part of attempting the question is that you should understand what is the examiner expecting you to do. So if we look at this specific question, you would realize this thing that what the examiner wants you to do is that the examiner is saying that uh, evaluate the divisional performance at JHK. So that means 
in the question you would be able to calculate the performance of the company and you would be able to uh, comment you would be able to comment on the performance so what happens is that what do you need to do you need to be able to calculate the performance and then the second thing is you need to uh, comment uh, on the performance of the entity that what exactly uh, is the performance of the entity now let's move a bit forward Now let's move a bit forward and discuss further. So what else is there? Let's think. Uh, the next thing is, it says, uh, the critically, that means the examiner is asking you to criticize. That means he's asking you to look at the negative aspects of this. So what happens is, it says, that evaluate the divisional performance at JHK and critically, critically discuss the proposed, critically discuss the proposed measures of divisional performance. So what do you need to do? One of them is you have to calculate and comment on the performance. And second thing is that you have to talk about the proposed measures, the measures which are being used, the way the organization is measuring the performance. So you have to talk about that. Are these measures relevant? Are these measures relevant? Can there be better measures, et cetera, et cetera. So this is what you would have to talk about. So that's one of the requirements of the question. What next is there? The next thing with respect to this question is, it says outline the criteria for designing a transfer pricing system. What does it say? Outline the criteria for designing the transfer pricing system and evaluate the two methods. So what do you need to do? Do you see what happens is a very important thing that you need to understand a lot of his students, they miss out this thing is the examiner, whenever he uses the word end in the question or whenever he is using the comma, whenever he uses the word end and whenever he is using the comma, that means the examiner is asking you multiple requirements. That means the examiner is asking you multiple requirements. So when the question says, when the question says and that means the same requirement has started when the question what happens is generally what happens is uh, there is a student asking me a question i'm sorry i'm not able to know your name because probably you have not written down name is uh, 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 you can share your name uh, it depends upon what type of requirements are there generally the requirement which are uh, not of an application nature base. So in those requirements, the marks allocated are low and those requirements which are, uh, uh, which are application based, there are, there are more marks allocated to those requirements. So <clears throat> anyways, now outline the criteria for designing a transfer pricing system and evaluate and evaluate. So that means you have to identify what criteria should be followed in order to establish the transfer pricing and evaluate the two methods. So there must be any two methods that are given in the question discussed of calculating the transfer price between the service and the manufacturing service division perform appropriate calculations. You have to discuss. Third is it says evaluate the potential impact. When it says impact, the impact means change. When it says impact, the impact means change. So whenever the question's requirement is impact. So that means what you need to do is that you need to say, what happens now and what is gonna happen later. When the question's requirement says impact, so what do you need to do? You need to say what happens now and you need to say what is gonna happen later on. That is what the impact is going to be. So it says evaluate the potential impact of the introduction of the new executive information system. So we are gonna be talking about the executive information system also in the question at JHK, at JHK, at JHK on performance management so what is the impact going to be? I repeat, what is the impact going to be? That is something that you have to talk about. 
So let's talk. Let's discuss about it. That how exactly are we gonna go go about it? So once we read through the question, we'll understand. Will be awarded for the format, the style, and the structure of the discussion of your answer. So what does it say? The professor. Now see. I'm going to type down my answer because I can understand that my writing is very bad and uh, you people have had enough of my writing. <laughs> so don't worry about it. I'm going to type them out. So now see, um, when we are going to be talking about the requirements to this question, we need to go through the question and we need to talk about each and every part of the question. Uh, See, it says JHK is structured into two divisions. I've told you people also earlier also that whenever you are writing down the answer to the questions, I repeat, I've told you people earlier also that whenever you're writing down answers to the question, always, uh, whenever you're reading through the question, always try to make sure that you pile up the information as you go through the question. It says JHK uh, has got two divisions. One of them is a manufacturing and sale and the other one of them is service. So you've got MS division and you've got the service division. It says the board are now considering ways to improve coordination of the activities of the division for the benefit of the company as a whole. So what is the board trying to do? The board is trying to, um, um, uh, considering new ways to improve the coordination of the activities of the division. Now, company's mission is to maximize shareholder wealth. So important thing is you need to mention that mission of of the organization is shareholder wealth. The mission of the organization is shareholder wealth. What next is there? <clears throat> the next thing is, it says currently the board uses total shareholder return as an overall corporate performance measure and a return on investment. And a return on investment. And a return on investment as their main relative measure of performance between the two divisions. So what has the board been using? The board has been using the total shareholder return and the board has been using the return on investment. These are the two things that the board has been using. The board's main concern is that the divisional manager's performance. The board's main concern is that the divisional manager's performance is not being properly assessed by the divisional performance measures used are not evaluating the performance properly. So what are they saying? They're saying performance is not proper. <clears throat> the performance is not properly evaluated. They now want to consider other measures of divisional performance, the residual income and the economic value added. What do they need to consider? They want to consider the residual income and the economic value added. So the proposed measures are what? The proposed measures are the economic value added and the residual income. These are the proposed measures that the entity wishes to go for. The entity wishes to go for the economic value added and the residual income. A colleague has collected the following data which will allow calculation of ROI, RI and the EVA. So you've got manufacturing sales, you've got service division, uh, the revenue, operating costs, operating profit, a portion head office cost, profit before tax, capital employed. The notional cost of capital, current cost of debt, tax rate, etc, 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 depreciation, all other non-cash expenses. It says all operating costs are tax deductible. In addition to the divisional performance measure, the board wants to consider the position of the service division. Uh, the standard costs within the service division are as follows. So now see, what happens is I'm not talking about this information right now, because to me, this information seems to be relevant for the transfer pricing 
workings that we are going to do they are most relevant for the second uh, part of the question and not relevant probably for the first part of the question now how exactly are we going to be answering this question so if we could just look at the requirements of the question so that we could have an idea what is the examiner asking us to do evaluate the divisional performance at jhk so it says that evaluate the performance evaluation of the performance would mean what you would have to calculate the return on investment evaluation of the performance would mean what you would have to calculate the residual income you would have to calculate the economic value added for both of them and you would have to comment on the results of these so what do you need to do you need to you need to calculate the return on investment you need to calculate the residual income you need to calculate the economic value added and you need to comment on the results that has been achieved through them and you need to comment on that what is uh, i mean you need to comment on the results achieved on the basis of this and say whether the entity has performed well or the entity has not performed well that's one thing the second thing is critically discuss the proposed measures of divisional performance so what does it say and critically discuss the proposed measures of divisional performance now so what happens is the proposed measures what do we say proposed measures the proposed measures are what the residual income and the proposed measures are economic value added that means what do you need to do you need to talk about the pros and cons you need to talk about the pros and cons of the residual income and the economic value added you need to talk about the pros and cons of the residual income and the economic value added okay so can you people just start doing the calculation can you start doing the calculation yeah can you just start doing the calculation please can you start doing the calculation please Yeah please do the calculations
Okay, now see, <clears throat> what happens is, uh, you've got ample amount of information which is available here and the examiner hasn't told you that how exactly would you be needing to calculate. So what do we need to do? We need to uh, do the maximum possible calculations that we can. And what is that maximum possible calculations that we can? You're being given operating profit. You're being given profit before tax. What is the difference between this operating profit and the profit before tax? That an apportioned head office cost. That's called apportioned head office cost. So from the exam perspective, there are two terminologies which are, from the exam perspective, there are two terminologies which are very important, which is controllable profit and which is called non-controllable profit. So if the examiner has given you the information you as a student should make sure that you make use of the maximum information that is available. I repeat what you as a student has to make sure that you have to use the maximum information that is available for you. Now, what do we mean by you as a student have to use the maximum information that is available for you is that you need to understand this thing that if you can, if you have got the information through which you can calculate the return on investment using controllable profit, you use it, the controllable profit. If you have an information available through which you can calculate using the non-controllable profit, so you use it, you, you calculate using the non-controllable profit. That is something that you have to do. So we have got these two uh, divisions, which is manufacturing and sales and the service. These are the two divisions that you have. I repeat, these are the two divisions that you have, which is manufacturing and sales. And this other one of them is service. Now, the next thing that you need to understand is that um, we can say, we can say one of them is going to be because you can get, this is the controllable profit. This is the controllable profit. This is the non-controllable profit. So for the controllable return on investment, uh, the profit, the formula is going to be the operating profit divided by, what is it? The operating profit divided by the capital employed. So what you could do is that you could say it's going to be 386 divided by 1294. The next one is going to be 6 divided by 38. So hence resultingly what happens is uh, okay, Arun, and what about the next one? 23% and 13%. 23% is one of them. 13% is the other one of them. I repeat, one of them is 23% and the other one of them is 13%. Okay, now the next situation is the next situation is uh, this is the controllable. Now, the next one is non-controllable ROI. If we talk about non-controllable ROI, uh, you will use the profit before tax. You would divide it by the capital employed. 
the profit before tax that is available to us is 301 divided by 1294. The other one of them is uh, 5 divided by 38. So hence, it's going to be 23.2%. And it's going to be 13.15%. Okay. Kimberly, you are asking where am I getting these numbers from? So I'm getting these numbers from here. I'm, I'm mentioning the formula also. I'm mentioning the formula also that how exactly am I calculating it? I'm mentioning the formula also. Okay, uh, because you see what happens is whatever the information that is available, you have to make sure that you have to uh, use it. Uh, Kimberly, that's okay, you just round it off, not an issue. Not an issue, you just round it off. Okay, are we getting a wrong number over here? Is this a wrong calculation? Okay, the calculation over here was wrong. It's 29.8%. And that one was what? 16%, right? Okay, thank you. Yes, Mohsen Siddiqui, we are required to perform both calculations. Now see, let's move a bit forward and discuss further. The next thing that you need to understand is that uh, you have been able to calculate this ROI. Now the same thing would happen with respect to the residual income that you can calculate two types of residual income. Uh, one of them is going to be the residual income based on uh, the controllable profit. And the other one of them is going to be the residual income based on non-controllable profit. Um, ideally speaking, this is operating profit. Uh, the notional cost of capital used is 9%. The tax rate is this and the operating cost is so-and-so, so-and-so, so-and-so. Now see. So when we talk about the uh, this residual income based on the controllable profit, so you would say that it's actually going to be the profit minus uh, the charge on investment is what? 9% multiplied by capital employed. Then similarly, Non-controllable profit, again, the uh, profit before tax here, the operating profit over here, operating profit over here. Profit before tax minus, minus 9% into capital employed. So it's going to be what? It's going to be 386 minus And then you've got six minus. <sighs> okay. Is it what it is? 269.54? Uh, 
Uh, no, we don't have the formulas in the exam. You have to remember these formulas, please. You don't have the formula in the exam. You have to remember this formula. Five point four six here, and if we talk about the non-controllable profit, So now the last one that we need to do is the economic value added calculation. So let's talk about the economic value added calculation. Uh, with respect to the economic value added calculation, uh, how do we do it? We say no pat minus VAC into capital employed. So in order to do this no pat calculation, we would have to go about uh, onto the next page. And in order to do this no pat working. The manufacturing sale division is one of them. The manufacturing sale division is one of them. The service division is another one of them. So what we are going to do is that we are going to say, uh, for you to be able to calculate the no pat, I repeat, for you to be able to calculate the no pat, you would say the profit before tax is three zero one and five. The profit before tax is three zero one and five. Sorry, the profit before interest and tax. So when you go for no pat, it's profit before interest and tax three eighty six and six. The next thing is. Operating costs are tax deductible. So what are these operating costs? The depreciation of 88, two points, this, non-cash expenses is this, 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 this. The tax at the rate of 30% is going to be applied. So you'll end up getting PBIT one minus T. Gives you one, one, six approximately. Gives you 1.8 approximately. Then you add up depreciation. Then you add up non-cash expenses. We should use PBIT. If you write down the answer directly, Mohsen, you will not be getting marks. You need to show the calculation because what happens is if you show the calculation, uh, you that means you are saving yourself in case if there is a computational error. You're saving yourself from losing the marks in case if there is a computational error. So what happens is 88.4, 2.7.3. Resultingly, what happens is you will end up getting the no pad here. Seven point two is your no pad. What is it? Seven point two is your no pad.
7.2 is your NOPAT and uh, the capital employed is available. So what are we gonna do? Okay, are we being given any investment assumption? Okay, now see. <clears throat> so what happens is 362 and 7.2. So 362 minus 362 minus 9% into 1294 and 7.2 minus 9% into 1294. Now, see what happens over here is five point six two thirty eight. The capital is thirty eight. Have you made any error? I'll hear also. Uh, we probably made an error up here also. It's 38. It's 38. Okay, I've done the calculation and what I'm doing right now is I'm zooming it out so that you people could see. Okay, Rabi Ali, I'm going to explain to you what you are saying. Just wait a bit. Just wait a bit. Just give me two, three minutes. I'm going to explain this point. Uh, kindly look at the calculations and let me know in case if you've got any issues, in case if you've got any questions. Yes, in case if the information is available for both controllable and non-controllable information, we need to go for both of them.
done okay now see um i've got multiple questions and uh, there are few things that i need to explain to you people the requirement of the question was i repeat the requirement of the question was that you have to what do you need to do you have to you have to evaluate the divisional performance at ghk you have to evaluate the divisional performance at ghk and critically discuss the proposed measures of divisional performance so in order to uh, in order to calculate the performance what do you need to do evaluate the divisional performance so first of all you need to calculate this performance what do you need to do you need to calculate this performance and then you need to comment on it so we have done the calculation and now what we are going to do is that we are going to we are going to comment on it we have done the calculation what are we going to do now we are going to comment on them now see so what exactly is going to be our comment now before i go on doing the commenting there's one thing that i wanted to tell you people with respect to the eva calculation now you see different approaches can be adopted with respect to the eva calculation and the examiner is going to give you marks for both of them it's just that you have to mention the assumption generally speaking the assumption that the examiner is they use is that the assumptions that he uses that that the depreciation and the investment in non current asset to maintain operations at current levels are same that means what happens is that means what happens is if you are adding up this here it is going to be added deducted here so this is what the general other that is usually embedded in the eva computations now if you have to use this assumption use this assumption and mention it if you don't want to use which i have not used so i will probably write down this thing and what is it that i am going to write down so what i am going to write down is that i am going to say that the it is assumed that no investments in non current asset is needed for the maintenance of operations so this is what i am going to write down this is the assumption that i have taken so you need to mention the assumption that you have taken i repeat you as an entity have to mention the assumption that you have taken with respect to the computations <coughs> is that okay now okay now uh so when we talk about the performance so you see what happens is um if we could comment on the performance we could say that the controllable roi 29.8% 16% 23.2% 13.5% 15.5% okay so you see with respect to the roi generally speaking how do we comment on roi we compare the roi versus the expected return we compare the roi with the expected return so the expected return is given to you people the expected return is given to you people and the expected return is what the expected return is probably the cost of capital which is 9% i repeat the expected return is probably the cost of capital which is 9% so the expected capital is given to you people and which is usually this is 9% right so this is the return on uh, this is the capital cost so 9% so if anything which is exceeding 9% anything which is exceeding 
so that is going to be considered as a good performance i repeat anything which is going to be exceeding 9% that is going to be considered as a good performance now let's move a bit forward the next aspect with respect to the residual income is if the residual income is positive that means the value has been created if the residual income has been positive that means the value has been created it would be like this that whether the value has been created uh, how much value has been created so the greater it is the greater the value the greater it is the greater the value now what next is there <clears throat> the next thing that you need to understand is that the next thing that you need to understand is the same goes for the economic value added also that when it comes to the economic value added if the economic value added is positive that means the value has been created and if the economic value is negative that means the value has not been created that means the value has been deteriorated so on the basis of the both of these divisions have got a positive economic value added now what are we going to do how exactly are we going to answer let's just try to see this okay now see so what are you going to do you're going to write down the answers to this question this way uh you would say that using the controllable return on investment using the controllable return on investment um the head office costs are not allocated to the divisions and the performance of both divisions is such that their actual return on investment is greater than their cost of capital indicating that the return achieved is greater than 9% cost required by providers of finance so that's one thing so that is one thing that you would have to understand now what next is there the next situation is although a better comparison would be when we are provided although better comparison would be when you are provided with target return but in the absence of target return the vac can be used as the benchmark now the economic value added and the residual income are both positive indicating that a return in excess of the cost of finance has been earned so this is what you will be evaluating the performance to be i repeat this is the evaluation of the performance i repeat this is the evaluation of the performance
Now, the next requirement of this part is that you have to discuss the proposed measures of divisional performance. Now, when we are going to be discussing the proposed measures of divisional performance, so what are we going to do? So, uh, when you will be discussing these proposed divisional performance measures, so you'd be talking about the advantages and you'd be talking about the disadvantages of each one of them and whether they are suited for the divisions in the given circumstances. So when you will be talking about it, you'll be, you'll be writing down the answer like this. That is, you will be discussing about the advantages. You'll be discussing about the disadvantages of this specific divisions uh, of these uh, divisions in the given scenario. That is what you would be doing. Now, how exactly would we be doing it? So I could just tell you about a few of those uh, uh, things, which is that when it comes to ROI, um, provides in percentage form, depending upon investment I mean, like provide results in percentage form, which is easy to understand and is simple to calculate. The problem with ROI is that divisions would delay investments. Divisions would delay investment in non-current assets in order to ensure that, in order to ensure that the capital employed figure reduces and hence ROI increases. This will be detrimental for entity whose growth may be affected due to lack of investments in non-current asset. Now the question mark would be, uh, yes, uh, John Mupa, thank you for this. This is what I've uh, actually mentioned. Uh, this whole thing which I've mentioned this is actually the concept of dysfunctional behavior. Uh, this is basically a concept of dysfunctional behavior. Dysfunctional behavior. Why? Because this is actually telling you that behavior. Yeah. Okay, with respect to the residual income, the RI, the problem with the residual income is that I mean, uh, the one thing is, it's an absolute measure. Provides result in dollar terms. Can be affected by the size of investment as a investment with a larger amount can lead to higher RI.
Yes, uh, this is what exactly the concept was that it cannot affect the divisions of different sides. Cannot be used to compare divisions of different sizes. Uh, furthermore, the use of desired return can be subjective. So that's what it is going to be with respect to the residual income. The third one of them is economic value added. What is it going to be? Economic value added. When I'm going to be talking about the economic value added, what is it going to be? The economic value added, which is the EVA. How would we write down the answer to the EVA? Again, it's an absolute measure. Like residual income, but considers VAC as the desired return closer to cash flow as adjustments for non-cash items made. The problems with this is it is difficult to measure. Problem with it is it's a difficult to measure, requires expertise in measuring it. So these are a few things that you would have to talk about. Yes, also can be subject to, can be subject to manipulation due to accounting policies. Now, from the exam perspective, the requirement was of 12 marks. So how many points should we write down? So what I would suggest is, since there are two divisions, what you could probably do is that you could measure the performance of these two divisions using these measures. So that is going to be approximately six marks. And then you talk about one advantage, one disadvantage for each. So that is also going to be six marks. That is how you do it. Is that okay now? Okay, let's move a bit forward. Um, I'm gonna discuss this question further so that uh, I'm gonna read this question further so that we can answer more questions. Now it says currently the service division does two types. Okay, sorry. Now uh, we did not read it from here. Uh, yes, uh, Ianu, thank you very much for this uh, message of yours. This is really good to see that uh, the requirements of, I mean, like the confusions are being cleared amongst yourselves. So yes, it has to be entity specific, ideally the answer that is gonna help value, help add value. Now, what does it say? It says, in addition to the divisional, Okay, uh, Jodian, uh, the points that have been made, which points are you talking about? These points? Yeah, you could possibly take a screenshot of it. And for all of you, I would request you that when you are communicating, uh, you communicate with all panelists and attendees so that the other students can actually see your uh, answers, uh, see your questions and can respond you back.
Okay, now let's move a bit forward and discuss further. So the other part of the question is, it says, in addition to the divisional performance measures, I repeat, in addition to the divisional performance measures, the board wants to consider the position of the service division. The board wants to consider the position of the service divisions. The standard costs within the service division are as follows. So these are the standard costs within the service division. What are these standard costs? The labor costs, the variable divisional overhead per hour, the fixed divisional overhead per hour, that is what it is. The overheads are allocated by the labor hours. The overheads are allocated by the labor hours. So this is what we have got with respect to the service division. Currently the service division does two types of work. So this is the information pertaining to the service division that it says it does two types of work. Okay, now see what happens is when we talk about this service division, what is it up to? It's actually doing two types of work. What is that two types of work? Uh, there are repairs that are covered by JHK's warranty. And there are repairs which are done outside warranty at the customer's request. So one of them is a JHK warranty repair. And one of them are the repairs for the outsiders. It says the service division is paid by the customer for the out of warranty repairs. Well, the repairs under warranty generate an annual fee of 10 million, which is a recharge from the manufacturing and sales division. So with respect to this GHK, $10 million is charged to the division, which is a recharge from the manufacturing and sales division. It says, The company sells 440,000 units per year. So the annual sales are 440,000 units per year. And in the past, 9% of these have needed a repair within a three year warranty. The multiply by 9%, you end up getting the repair that these are the ones which have ended up getting the repair. So 440,000 into 9% gives you 3960 is what the repairs have been. 3960. Parts are charged by the MS division to the service division at cost. So the MS division charges to the service division the parts at cost, at cost. And an average $75 per repair. So the parts are being transferred from here to here at $75 per repair. Next thing is it says the repair takes two hours on average to complete. The duration of the repair is two hours to complete. The board are considering amending this existing 10 million internal recharge agreement between the manufacturing sale and the service. There has been some discussion of tailoring one of the two transfer pricing approaches, market price or cost plus to meet the company's objectives. So what they are trying to do is that they're trying to establish that the transfer price that they would be using is either going to be the cost plus basis or they will be using a market-based transfer price. Now what next is there? The next situation is, it says, although the service division has the capacity to cover all of the existing work available, it could outsource the warranty service work. So you're saying that the service department has got the capacity, but what it could do is that it could outsource it. 
as it is usually straightforward as it is usually straightforward it would retain the out of warranty service work as this is a higher margin business so what are you going to do you would retain out of service repair work as that's a higher margin business now what next is there it says it would then begin looking for other opportunities to earn revenue using its engineering experience a local engineering firm has quoted a flat 200 per warranty service repair provided that they obtain a contract for all of the repairs for from jhk so an external service provider has quoted that we are going to charge you 200 per repair and that would cover everything that would cover everything now what next is there the next situation is it says finally the board is considering a change now see this is about the last part which is executive information system so i'm not going through it right now first of all i'm going to talk about the answer to the second part there are multiple requirements that you need to uh, handle and answer and that is number one it's consider outline the criteria for designing a transfer pricing system so one of the requirement is that you need to outline the criteria for designing a transfer pricing system okay so that means the examiner in simple terms is asking you that what are the characteristics of a good transfer pricing system that means the examiner is asking you the characteristics of the good transfer pricing system so now what is uh, what are the characteristics of the good transfer pricing system so that is basically should promote divisional autonomy number 2 is that it should facilitate the divisional performance measurement the third thing is yeah enable goal congruence behavior then what else is there uh facilitates minimization of taxes when operating in multiple jurisdictions the fifth one of them is encourages capacity utilization encourages capacity utilization so these are few good characteristics of the divisional the yeah, fair division of profits so that is facilitates divisional performance evaluation so these are the few characteristics of a good transfer pricing system are going to be so if you come across such a question in the exam this is what you would have to talk about
Is that okay now? Shall I move a bit forward? With respect to second part of this question. Uh, we have not done the transfer pricing working right now. Uh, FAD, we haven't done it right now. I would request all of you that please communicate with all panelists and attendees in chat window so that everyone could see what you are asking. Okay, now see. <clears throat> so the next aspect is, uh, Mazali, uh, just uh, let me get over with this question and then we are going to take a break. Just let me get over with this question. Thank you for reminding me. Thank you. I completely missed it out. Now, see, so what was the requirement to the question? The requirement to the question was outline the criteria for designing a transfer pricing system. So what do you need to do? You need to tell the examiner that what are the characteristics of the good transfer pricing system. And these are the things that need to be kept in mind while designing this transfer pricing system. The second thing is that and evaluate and evaluate the two methods discussed of calculating the transfer price between the service and the manufacturing and sales division perform appropriate calculations. Now, what do I need to do? What are the calculations that I will be doing? Uh, one of them is a market price and the other one of them is a cost plus price. See what happens is uh, there is a cost to the division there is a cost to the group. I repeat, there is a cost to the division and there is a cost to the group. So what happens over here is for every single the standard cost within the service division are as follows. If I talk about the service division cost, I've got the labor cost, which is per hour is 18 and we are being told somewhere here that an average repair takes two hours to be completed. So that means what happens is 18 into two, 36 is for the labor cost. Variable divisional overhead. Variable overhead is what? 12 into 2, which is going to be 24. Then The third one of them is the fixed overhead per hour. The fixed overheads cost, fixed cost per hour right now, because what happens is um, I need to see that what are the other costs that are to be considered. So this is 36 plus 24. Then there is a cost for the parts, which is going to be a 75 cost. The cost for the parts is going to be what? 75. So if I calculate all of them, it's going to be what? 36 plus 24 plus 75. It gives you 135. This is a 
वेरिएबल कॉस्ट ऑफ रिपेयर देन यू आर बीन गिवेन द फिक्स ओवर एट विच इज ट्वेंटी फाइव मल्टीप्लाई बाय टू गिव यू फिफ्टी सो दिस इज इन टर्न गोइंग टू बी वॉट वन एटी फाइव दैट्स अ कॉस्ट ऑफ रिपेयर दैट्स अ फुल कॉस्ट ऑफ रिपेयर कॉस्ट Four forty thousand is what it is. Nine percent is expected to be what is charged. Thirty-nine thousand six hundred are the number of repairs that are expected to take place. I repeat, thirty-nine thousand six hundred are the number of repairs that are expected to take place. Now let's try to understand this. <clears throat> um the cost sorry if i say the selling price per repair 10 million divided by 39600 Gives you two fifty two point five two. That's what the selling price per repair is. The variable cost per repair is one thirty five. Gives you one seven point five two is going to be the contribution per repair. And then the fixed overhead per repair is going to be fifty. So resultingly, sixty-seven point five two is the profit per repair multiplied with thirty-nine six hundred. Gives you two point six seven four million. That is what the profit of the service division is. If we look at the current situation, this is what the service division's profit is. So I repeat, this is what the service division's profit is. If the market-based transfer pricing are being followed. the market based transfer pricing are what the market based transfer pricing is that you will be you will be you will be charging 200 135 is your variable cost gives you 65 minus 50 gives you 15 as the profit for 39600 ends up getting what So zero point five nine four million is what the profit is going to be. Zero point five nine four is what the profit is going to be. now what do we need to do from the perspective of the exam we were being told that 
evaluate the two methods discussed of calculating the transfer price between the service and the manufacturing sale division so you need to evaluate you need to talk about these methods so what are you going to do you're going to say that look uh based on the calculations performed above the service division presently earns a profit of 2.674 million this is a good deal for the service division but manufacturing and sale division may not be happy with such a charge as this will uh as this will impact their profitability as the same work could be performed in the market for 200 dollars the manufacturing and sale division would emphasize upon paying cost of 135 the variable cost and some proportion of the directly attributable fixed cost but would not be interested in paying 10 million for the repairs that they pay now however any price below dollar 200 will be considered to be Two hundred would be considered to be acceptable. Moving to market based or cost plus price with a maximum cap of dollar two hundred would ensure would ensure that the strategic work of warranty repair is kept in house and that the strategic work of the warranty repair is kept in house and that service division would try its efficiency to be able 
people to increase its own profits kindly look at it you would have to have these calculations you would have to have these calculations to be able to support these arguments you would be needing these calculations to support your arguments yeah is everyone okay with this okay so what have we discussed we have gone through this specific part also um which was about the transfer pricing now there is a last part of this question before we take a break for the prayers so the last part of the question is evaluate the potential impact i told you people that whenever the examiner says impact the examiner is asking you a question that what was it right now and how would it be later on so when it says potential impact of the introduction of the new executive information system at jhk on the performance management so what is going to be the impact of the introduction of the new executive information system on the performance management <laughs> okay now see okay um fed you're saying that how the transfer pricing would affect the group now see what happens is that um, if this work is being outsourced then it would affect the group like this that the group is only incurring the variable cost right now the fixed cost would remain the same so the relevant cost for the group is the variable cost only i repeat the relevant cost for the group is the variable cost only the fixed cost is something that's going to remain if you end up paying 200 outside to the external party for the third party that means you are losing out the money because you are complete variable cost is 135 okay Uh, yeah it would not be a good decision for this group to outsource ah uh, yes mohan siddiqui more or less this is how it is going to be now see what happens is it says evaluate the potential impact of the introduction of the new executive information system at jhk always good thing to know is that what is the current system 
Finally, the board is also considering a change to the information system at GHK. The existing systems are based in the individual functions, which is production, sales, service, finance, HR. So what do you have? You have got a disintegrated system right now. You don't have an integrated system right now. It says the board are considering the implementation of a new system based on an integrated single database. Based on an integrated single database that would be accessible at any of the company's five sites. So what is the board trying to do? The board is trying to implement a single database that would be accessible at company's five sites. The company's network would be upgraded to allow for the real time. The company's network would be upgraded to allow for the real time input and update of the database. Further, it says the database would support a detailed management information system and a high level executive information system. Now see, try to have an understanding, try to have a discussion about it. Um, what is this? How exactly are we gonna be answering this question? Before we go on answering this question, let me tell you what happens now is right now the existing system is like this. You have got one, two, three, four, five. There are five sites and the data is stored in five sites. So if the senior management has to take a decision, it has to obtain data from sales, from finance, from this, from this, etc., from the different departments. And when you have to seek data from this department, from this department, from this department, from this department, from this department. So that means what happens is this, all these data, this data could be different to each other. This data could be, uh, could uh, be obtained with delay. Uh, then what happens is a lot of time would be spent in compiling this information. A lot of time would be spent in compiling this information. So what happens is you as an entity, when you implement an integrated system, when you implement an integrated system, the integrated system actually means that you've got a single database. You give access to each one of those five departments but then what you do is that you give them logical access. That is the finance department is only able to, is only able to work on the finance function, is not able to work on the other functions. The stores department is able to work on the stores area only and not the other aspects. So what happens is that you actually, whenever you integrate, whenever you introduce this integrated database. So the integrated database would actually mean that you have introduced a single system and that single system would be accessed by everyone. A single database would be developed. And what could happen is your, your senior management, what they could do is that they could access this database. And by accessing this database, they will be able to generate reports. They will be able to generate more analysis, more analytics, and they would be able to generate more details and furthermore, the data accuracy would also take place. So generally the impact of introducing the new performance measure on the performance management is going to be that accurate information, uh, detailed reports, better analytics, etc. This is all going to be available. So when this is all going to be available, so what happens is this would lead to a better decision making. This would lead to a better decision making. Further, since you are introducing the economic value added, so the relevant info will also be captured. So you need to, you need to write down your answer this way. You need to tell the examiner that look, what actually happens is, this is something that you have to keep in mind. Okay. Yes, the data, the data integrity increasing. Yeah, uh, John Mopa, yes, very good explanation. It's actually implementation of ERP. So the implementation of ERP is basically a creating unified corporate database 
and the implement and the introduction of this unified corporate database would mean what would actually mean that multiple databases are eliminated one single database is maintained and everyone is actually getting the reports the generating of the reports from that database so that the reports cannot differ between amongst the people do you people get it so when it says how it would affect performance management obviously when the information that would be available would be accurate uh, would be available in more detail better analytical would be provided so all of this is actually going to indicate what all of this is actually going to indicate that the uh, that the performance management would be better why because the information system has improved better information on a timely basis is ultimately going to help you plan better yes this would affect the overall performance measurement system Uh, well, Arun Kumar, it's talking. Yes, uh, it's talking about majorly the performance management. That how it would affect the way you manage the performance. It's not about uh, the training and all that. Yes, EVA would be captured because your performance management system now includes EVA. Do you people get it? okay good enough so we are done with this specific exam question and we are done with this divisionalization transfer pricing and the executive information system this is something that we have covered up through this specific question we are going to have a short break now and uh, we are going to continue after the break time so what we will be doing is we'll be having a short break now uh, and we continue after this break uh, we'll have a prayers break the time right now with me is 6:13 in fact
Um, I'm extending the break further because there is uh, a quick uh, short prayer break. Uh, I mean, like I don't want to take another break. So I'm extending a break further to 6.35 p.m. That is three more, five more, three more minutes from now. And then we are going to start off because so that we can offer another prayers, uh, the Maghrib prayers, and then we can move forward.
Okay, so I'm back again now. Um, I'm really sorry about it. Uh, my timing uh, of the break uh, was a bit wrong initially because uh, as soon as I got over with one of the prayers, so the time was there for the second prayer. So really sorry about it. Anyways, now let's move a bit forward and let's just start discussing further. So the next thing that we will be talking about is the next question. Um, Okay, Mohsen Siddiqui, uh, focus on what is important, how to do uh, correct way or not with the resource available. Okay, I would suggest you that uh, I conducted, uh, I mean, I've recently conducted two webinars for ACCA. Uh, one of them was for the December session and one of them was for the, uh, this uh, November, in fact, March session. So I would suggest that what I've done is I've covered the CSF, this KPI in the uh, November, uh, in fact, the December session webinars that I did. So I covered that specific area. I would suggest you can actually go about with that. Anyways, uh, let's move a bit forward. So the next question that we shall be discussing is the name of this question is ENT, Entertainment Company. And what are the areas that are covered in this ENT entertainment company question? One of them is the Boston Consulting Group, Growth Vector Metrics, BCG Matrix. And the other one of them is the rewards. In fact, not the ends, that's an ends of growth vector matrix. It's a BCG. And uh, the second thing is the rewards. So these are the two areas that are covered in this specific question. Let's have a quick discussion about few things and then we are gonna move on to this question. So what does it say? The first thing with respect to this is it says ENT is a large diversified entertainment business based in Thailand. So what is it? It's a large entertainment business, which is based in Thailand. The company's objective is the maximization of shareholder wealth for its family owners. So what is it? The company's objective is the maximization of the shareholder wealth for its family owners. It has four divisions. What are those four divisions? The restaurants, the cafes, their bars, their dance clubs. These are the four divisions that this entity has. Now, what next is there? It says, recently ENT board have identified that there are problems in managing such a diversified company. So what is it? They have got problems in managing such a diversified company. They've employed consultants who have recommended that they should perform a BECG analysis to understand whether they have the right mix of businesses. CEO has questioned whether using this analysis is helpful in managing the group's performance. A business analyst has prepared the information on each division in the table below. So this is the information on each of the table that has been developed. Now the requirement is perform a BECG analysis of ENT's business and use this to evaluate the company's performance. So what do you need to do? There are two requirements of this question, perform a BECG analysis and then use it. To evaluate the company's performance. The second thing is it says critically evaluate this BCG analysis of the performance management system at ENT. And the third one of them is evaluate the divisional managers remuneration package in the light of the divisional performance system and your BCG analysis. So I'm gonna ignore this part of the question right now. because this is pertaining to part C of the considered right now, the first and the second. So before I go on, uh, let, let me have a quick uh, uh, recall of the BCG analysis. If we talk about the BCG analysis, so under the BCG analysis, what we do is that we plot a company's products uh, on a scale. And what are the two sides of those scales? There are two factors that you consider on that scale. One of them is basically the, uh, one of them is a market share. And the other one of them is going to be the market growth rate. So one of them is going to be the market share and the other one of them is going to be the market growth rate. What does the BCG analysis says? The BCG analysis says, that you can have two extremes, either you've got a low market share 
or you can have a high market share. You can have a low market growth rate. You can have a high market growth rate. Now, what happens is a product for which the market share is low and for which the growth rate in the industry is also low, that product is considered to be a dog category product. A product which is a market share is low, market share is low, but the market growth rate is high. Uh, that is termed as either a problem child or you could say it's a question mark category product. It's a problem child or a question mark. A product where your market share is high, but the growth rate is low is considered as a cash cow. And this product is considered to be your star category product. What does the BCG matrix says? The BCG matrix says that you should invest in your stars. You should maintain your cash cows. <coughs> you should divest your dogs and you should analyze your problem childs. What does it say? <clears throat> it says that what you could do is that you could, you, could, uh, you could maintain your cash cows, you could invest in your stars, you could analyze your problem childs and you could divest the dogs. This is what the BCG analysis says. Now, so why is it, why is it like this? Because when you would continue to invest in your stars, there's going to be a time when your stars would become cash cows. If you don't invest in them, you might actually lose out the position, they become this. These problem childs can be your stars or can be your dogs. So what happens is that under the BCG analysis, uh, the Boston Consulting Group growth share metric, the Boston Consulting Group matrix, what it says is that, that an entity should have more and more stars and cash cows. Entity should have more and more stars and cash cows and uh, the entity should have minimal dogs. The entity should actually uh, reduce the question mark category products. This is what the BCG analysis tells you. So this is what the BCG analysis tells you. <clears throat> now, so what we are actually required to do in this question is we are required to perform a BCG analysis of ENT business. What do we need to do? We need to perform a BCG analysis of this ENT business and we need to use this to evaluate the company's performance. We need to use this to evaluate the company's performance. Now, what do we need to do? So we are going to read through the question. This is the data that is available, the actual data in 2010, the actual data of 2011, the forecast data for 2012, the forecast data for 2013. It says in T-land, in T-land, the economy is generally growing at about 2% per annum. So the economic growth rate is 2%. I repeat, the economic growth rate is 2%. So it says the economy is generally growing at 2% per annum. The restaurant, the cafes, the bar sectors are all highly fragmented. With, with what? With many small operators. So you've got the restaurants, the cafes, the bars, they're all highly fragmented with many small operators. Consequently, a market share of more than 3% is considered large. So market share of more than 3% is considered to be large. And it says, uh, so that it is comparable to the share of the largest operators in each market. There are fewer small late night dance clubs and the current market leader holds 15% market share. There have not been many new developments within the divisions except for a new wine bar format launched by the bars division, which has surprised the board by its success. Now, when we have to perform the BCG analysis, 
how exactly are we going to be performing the bcg analysis let's try to have an understanding of this that how exactly would we be performing this bcg analysis see what happens here is that <coughs> for each of them for each of them you need to you need to calculate what you need to calculate the growth rate and for each of them you need to calculate the market share i repeat for each of them you need to calculate the growth rate and for each of them you need to calculate the market share the growth rate can be calculated in different manners what i am doing right now is i am actually calculating the growth rate using Uh, i know that the information that is available for multiple years 2010 11 12 13 all of that information is available so if i could just try to calculate the growth rate for each one of them let's say i say um restaurants so i could use the geometric mean method and what is that method going to be i would say 10752 which is this value multiply by 1 plus growth rate power 3 why 3 because this is one year of growth this is second year of growth this is third year of growth So let's say multiply one plus g power three is equal to what ten thousand nine sixty eight. So hence, resultingly, what happens is one plus g power three is going to be one point zero two. And when we talk about the growth rate, it's going to be what one point zero two cube root. Minus one. So, can you just let me know that what is going to be the growth rate? Yeah, can somebody please let me know what is going to be the growth rate? Point six seven percent. Okay. Ah, uh, thank you, Kudazanai. Thank you. Okay. Can I have the growth rate for each one of these sectors? Can I have the growth rate for each one of these sectors, which is going to be for the cafe? I'm not doing the math. You people do the math for the cafe, for the bars, and for the dance clubs. For the cafes, for the bars, and for the dance clubs. Ah uh, yes, uh, there is another method to get this, and what is that method? That you do it this way. Ah, uh, you say that that this is ten thousand seven fifty two. That you could say ten thousand nine sixty eight minus ten thousand seven fifty two. Whatever the amount is, you divide it by three because that gives you the annual growth. Ten thousand nine sixty eight minus ten thousand seven fifty two divided by three gives you seventy two. That's an annual growth. so what you could probably do is that you can have the annual growth um and the 72 could be divided by uh, the average of these three <coughs> the 72 could be divided by average of these three
So that actually is 10,932 multiplied by 100. So it gives you 0 0.65 or 0 0.66%. So you can do that way also. I simply use the geometric mean method because to me, that's a good method in the given situation. <clears throat> yes, this is the yeah. Can you please can you all please share the growth rates to me, please? Thank you. What is for the cafe? 9.67 percent. Okay, for the cafes is what? I need cafes. 9.67 percent. Okay. Uh, what about the bars? Bar sector, bar sector. This, this. okay, there's a negative growth in the bars. And 7% is for the dance club. <clears throat> the economy is growing by what? 2% per annum. So if the economy is growing by 2% per annum, it's a high growth rate. It's a high growth rate. It's a low growth rate. It's a low growth rate. So you've got a high growth rate, you've got a low growth rate. Okay, can you please calculate the market share? Uh, we can do this market share on the basis of the actual data. So 56 divided by 10,860. For the restaurants, it's actually going to be 56 divided by 10,860. So it's actually going to be what half a percent. Uh, so can you just do the math for all of this, please? Yeah, can you people do the math for all of this? Okay, Christina Brown, what I did was I used three year uh, total sales, added them up, divide by three.
<clears throat> yeah, can I have the number please here? Okay, we've got cafe, which is 15.28% share. Uh, we've got the bars where we've got negative on, I mean, why negative? The bars is three and a half percent shares. And then you've got the dance clubs, which has got 11% share. I'm just trying to calculate the market share. I'm trying to calculate the market share. The growth rate is there and the growth rate was being classified like this. Now what happens is, what are we being told? We are being told that there are fewer small late night dance clubs and the market leader currently holds 15% market share. So what happens is, um, if you could just look at it, this is a high market share. This is also a high market share. This is a low market share, and this is also going to be a low market share. Okay, can, okay, just wait a bit. Uh, for the cafe, it has to be like this, 34 divided by double three for it. It's 1% only. Uh, there's something wrong with the cafe calculation that you people have done, it's 1%. So it's actually gonna be low. Thank you for highlighting. Thank you very much. Okay, now see what happens is if I say it's a high growth rate and a low market share, that means it's a question mark. It's a low growth rate with a high market share. That means it's a cash cow. The, the dance clubs, what happens is you've got a high market growth rate, you've got a low market share, again, a question mark. And then what happens is for the restaurant, they are going to be considered as a dogs. They're going to be considered as dogs. Now, so what was the requirement of the question? It was like, you had to analyze the, you have to perform a BCG analysis of this business and evaluate the company's performance. So what have you done? You've evaluated, you have performed the BCG analysis of this business, this is done. And what do we need to do? We need to use it to evaluate the company's performance. Now, if we evaluate the company's performance, so what happens is, uh, according to BCG, the entity has a cash generating bars division and two problem childs in the face of cafes and dance clubs. So there is a there is a cash generating bar division and the two problem childs, which are in the face of cafes and the dance clubs. Now what happens is that the cash generated from the cafes is being used for sorry, from the bars is being used for the funding of cafes and dance clubs 
whereas the restaurants are resources wasting segment that the entity has all the above analysis <clears throat> in the is on the basis of bcg framework and may not be relevant for each organization so this is what the bcg tells us it's not us it's the bcg who is telling us that this is what you have to do i repeat this is the bcg that is actually telling us this is what you have to do Okay, Christina Brown always use um, uh, always use the latest figure. Okay, Rabi Ali, uh, there is a question mark that whether it's a star or it's a dance club, but generally speaking, what happens is the leader in the market has got a fifteen percent share. So if the leader has a fifteen percent share, and if you have a eleven percent share, you are not the leader. And when you are not the leader, that means you have got a low market share. And uh, if you have got a low market share as per the BCG. then it's going to be considered as a question mark okay now see what happens is the next requirement how to calculate the market growth rate uh, mohsen we already calculated the market growth rate i use the i use this formula of the gordon growth model uh, which i mean in fact the geometric mean method which is i use the earliest value and i use the latest value and i multiplied it with 1 plus g power 3 and i calculated the market growth rate okay let's move a bit forward now what next is there let's let's discuss further it says critically okay why because you have divided the growth by 3 methods you have divided the growth by 3 the sorry the difference by 3 why because we need to know that how, how much has been generated per year that is something that we need to know okay now let's move a bit forward and discuss further the next aspect is questions requirement is critically critically evaluate the bcg analysis of the performance management system at ent now try to understand when you are using something as a i mean you see try to understand using a model as a performance management system
Okay, Christina Brown, I used the 2011 figures because that was the last actual information that was available. I did not use the latest. I mean, for the latest, I mean, the forecast figures were used to estimate the growth rate, but they were not actually used for the computation of the market share because the market share is based on the actual data. Okay, now using, now see what happens is, this is not the answer that I'm writing. I'm trying to explain to you people. When you're using a model as a performance management, this would mean <clears throat> that you are measuring performance using that model. You are interpreting performance using that model. And then you are rewarding or disowning the performance as per that specific model. Now you see, this is something that you need to understand. If you are using something as a performance management tool, so this is what you are doing. You are actually using that specific performance measures and on the basis of those specific performance measures, you are measuring performance. And then you are interpreting whether the performances are good or whether the performances are bad. And then you are saying that whether we should actually uh, be rewarding those performance or whether we should be uh, not rewarding those performance. This is something that you have actually, uh, are, are actually going to be doing. Do you understand this point? Now try to understand this. <clears throat> Basically what happened is, if we use the BCG, you see the use of BCG as a performance management system will have multiple issues. Why? Because the examiner says critically evaluate. I repeat the examiner is saying critically evaluate. So when he says critically evaluate, what do we mean by this? I repeat, when he says critically evaluate, what do we mean by this? Let's try to understand that. Examiner is actually asking you what could be the problems with this specific model. I repeat, the examiner is actually asking you that what could be the problem with this specific model. So now number one, <clears throat> yeah, majorly uh, you would have to talk about the merits and the demerits but majorly when the word critically evaluate says, so that means you have to be more focused upon uh, the uh, ne uh, negative aspects more. Now, you see the problems that are actually going to happen is that this BCG has no middle scale. There is either a high or a low um, growth, slash market share. So number one problem with respect to BCG is there is neither neither low. I mean, there's nothing in between. It's either high, it's either low. Now, only factors considered are market share and market growth rate. The third one of them is the definition of market is difficult. There could be subdivisions in the market and they may be ignored. Furthermore, not uh, necessarily that our dog is consuming resources because it may be providing you profits which are totally which are totally ignored which are totally ignored in the given situations the fifth one of them is the question marks may not actually be problematic and may be 
generating profits the interlinkage of these divisions is ignored that is maybe restaurants might be driving sales might be driving sales for the bars so you see this is something that you need, need to consider and you need to tell the examiner that look these are the problems with this bcg Okay, there is somebody who is asking a question, Sajaka Sajaki Rai, that you are confused why 11% is considered to be low. Now, you see what happens is in the question, this is what is mentioned over here. You need to read through this paragraph. There are multiple sectors. In all these sectors, 3% is considered to be a good market share. But there is only one specific sector where, where, is a, where there is a very high growth sector. And over there, the largest market shareholder has got 15% share. So you see what happens is on the basis of this, only one specific division is classified, uh, is compared on the basis of 15%. But for the rest, they are being compared using the 3%. Do you get it now? Okay, so is everyone okay with this? Okay, good enough. Now let's move. Uh, well, uh, the answer is sufficient enough. You link to whatever extent that you can, but um, not everything could be linked. Um, so you see, I did link out this restaurants and the bars, etc, etc. So to whatever extent that you can, you can link, you can you link or else that is perfectly fine. Now, what next is there? <clears throat> the next aspect of this question is there's a requirement, which is it says, the next requirement is what it says, evaluate the divisional manager's remuneration package in the light of the divisional performance system and your BCG analysis. So what do you need to do? You need to say that evaluate the divisional manager's remuneration package in the light of the divisional performance system.
Now see, <clears throat> what happens is, it says each of the division's performance measure is measured by the economic value added. So each of the division's performance is measured by the economic value added. The divisional managers have a remuneration package that is made up in two equal parts by the salary set according to industry norms and a bonus element which is based on achieving the cost budget numbers set by the company board. The chairman of the board has been examining the consistency of the overall objective of the business and the divisional performance measure and the remuneration packages at division level. He has expressed the worry that these are not aligned and that this might lead to a dysfunctional behavior. So what does it say? It says evaluate the divisional performance a divisional manager's remuneration package in the light of divisional performance measurement system and their BCG analysis. Try to understand this thing. What actually happens is, uh, first of all, <clears throat> whenever we talk about the rewards, there are few features which are mentioned in the building block model with respect to the rewards. And what are those features that are mentioned with respect to the rewards? Uh, the reward should be motivating. The reward should be, uh, there should be a clarity in the rewards. And the third one of them is, they should be based upon the controllable factors. So when we talk about the rewards, these are the few things that actually need to be there. They have to be motivating. They have to be clearly defined and they have to be controllable based upon the controllable factors. Now, furthermore, there could be the good features of the reward, which is it should, it should actually promote the goal congruent behavior. I repeat what happens is the rewards, what they should do is that they should promote the goal congruent behavior. Now, here, what is actually happening is at one point of time, the performance is being judged on the basis of economic value added. That is okay. Why? Because you're focusing upon the wealth creation. But for those divisions, which are in the growth stage, their EVA may be a question mark. Secondly, secondly, what happens is the bonus is linked to the cost budget. The bonus is linked to the cost budget. The problem is there that when you apply the BCG, you say the question marks have to be converted into stars. You say for the cows, you have to maintain them. Now, all of this would actually require investment. All of this would require innovation. And innovation would require experiment. So if you are considering all of this, and if you are considering all of this, and if you are restricting your people by this specific cost budget approach, that means what happens is, that means what happens is your rewards are not aligned. That means what happens is your rewards are not aligned to the objectives. So what you would do in this specific scenario is that you will tell the examiner, I repeat, what you would do in this specific scenario is that you would tell the examiner that look, I repeat, what you would do is that you would tell the examiner that look, um, what is important is you should actually know this thing that when it comes to these rewards, um, you can't have the four different, the four divisions, their performance cannot be measured same way. Secondly, the reward system of them cannot be same because their circumstances differ. The expectations differ. 
the circumstances differ, the expectations differ, so you can't have them on the same page. You can't measure their performance. You can't reward them in the same manner. So if the examiner is asking you evaluate divisional manager's remuneration package, so that's a completely wrong package because when you are when you are saying that the bonuses are linked to you achieving the cost budget, that means you are discouraging growth. That means you are discouraging innovation. That means you are preventing them from uh, uh, from uh, trying to uh, expand, from trying to grow. So that is something that you are preventing them to do. So all of this is going to be a problem. Is that okay now? Okay, so what have we done? We have actually gone through this question, which was the ENT entertainment. And this was a question 